Welcome to the show. I'm Kathy Ireland. Exposure to dry air, even in indoor environments, is uncomfortable and can cause problems like skin and eye irritation, hair damage, respiratory problems, and infection. Today, Condare CEO Oliver Zimmerman and Dr. Stephanie Taylor, CEO of Taylor Healthcare Consulting, join us to share more about how Condare is providing humidifiers to enhance the air we breathe. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Hello, Kathy. It's an honor yeah. to be here. Oliver, can you tell us about dry air and the problems it creates? Nature always seeks a natural balance. And in the case of air, that implies 100% saturation. So it will extract actually uh, water or liquids from anywhere it can, it can take them. And that then causes all sorts of issues uh, when it's too dry. So for instance, you get electrostatic discharge, so you get an electric shock, so to say, in winter time in particular then, of course. Um, then you have dust issues. Dust can free float if it's not actually bound by water particles, aerosols. Then it also gets into the accuracy of an industrial process when you deal with hygroscopic materials like wood, paper, or textiles that can distort. Then when it comes to food, food mainly consists of water, right? Mm -hmm. So if there is actually dry air, that will take the water out of a food. And the same then applies also when it comes to value preservation, be it for musical instruments or paintings, artwork, uh, museums. So for instance, we're humidifying Mona Lisa in the Louvre, and I could give you many more references <laughs> like that one. And then eventually we talk about health and performance, but we'll actually cover that later in, in the interview today. All right, and Dr. Taylor, can you share a brief overview of how indoor hydration can, can solve those challenges? Well, it's so interesting because we're used to thinking about the need for indoor humidity for these, for wood or for electrical circuitry. But recently, it's becoming increasingly evident how essential the correct level of water vapor in, in the air or humidity is for human health. And it's absolutely astounding how important it is, and it's exciting, too. So humidifying our air, it, it sounds like a wonderful investment, whether we're talking about preserving our food or the Mona Lisa, musical instruments, it, the list goes on. How affordable are humidifiers? Well, as always, you can start with very simple solutions, uh, mobile solutions, and then of course you have the extra work that goes with it. Or you do actually a larger investment in a fixed installed system. Now we're talking about residential homes. Right. Um, so in a, in a fixed installation, but then you do not have to worry about you know, adding water to it or uh, cleaning and so on and so forth. So there, of course, then we talk about a higher investment, but still affordable. It's no different from, let's say, an AC or uh, a ventilation system. And much healthier for you than those. Well, you always have to look at it in combination, right? Um, as long as you combine all of them in order to basically create a natural climate in an artificial way. I mean, all we're doing is we're bringing back the the, the healthy climate that we have outdoor to indoor. The, the, the sad part is that this got disconnected as we started building tight envelopes in the buildings. Indoor air quality comes down to three basic components. You've got temperature, humidity, and filtration. Humidity is a key component of having a comfort level inside the building. If the air is drier than your own body moisture, the air takes your moisture, makes you uncomfortable. Humans weren't meant to live in the desert, and so we've got to make sure we don't have desert conditions in our modern buildings. Here in Ottawa, for Condor, we produce all the humidifiers for the North American market. We also build a small residential unit to the large industrial units, the hospitals, the museums. It's no different than your home, your piano. You may have precious artwork you want protected. You need a humidifier, proper humidification, and that's what we do here. We are a state-of-the-art manufacturer of the gas humidifier product, and that product is superior to all the other gas humidifier products that uh, are available on the market. We offer more humidification and evaporative cooling solutions than 
any other company in the business, actually. All of our products basically come into four different technology groups, and it's based on the energy source, whether it's electric, gas-fired, pressure steam, or adiabatic technologies. We've done some major buildings, including Museum of History, the Louvre, San Francisco Museum of Modern Art, Smithsonian, we cover them all. Dr. Taylor, can you talk about the environmental impacts of optimal humidification and indoor air hydration and its impact that it has on our overall health? So Kathy, as human beings, we don't really make a practice of measuring our health as it responds to our environment. But we're now learning that when there's a certain range of indoor humidity or indoor air hydration, that is optimal for our immune defenses, it's optimal for our skin, it's optimal for our organ functioning, for our thinking. So this is something that's really just becoming uh, much more on the radar now. I may add to that that you know, the human body does not have any receptors to measure actually relative humidity. So you wouldn't be able to tell what the relative humidity is in this room right now you're able to say what the temperature is like approximately, but not relative humidity. So you will only feel actually the symptoms when it gets to the extremes. And that's what, what we just talked about. So it really takes a hygrometer, like I have one here, that measures the relative humidity in a room. And only then you know what it is like. And that's probably part of the issue why people are not more aware of, of this. And so can you explain how this works? What is, what is this telling us right now? See, air wants to be saturated, as I said before. So at 100% saturation, it reaches the dew point. The tricky part about that is that depending on temperature, it can actually absorb more or less water. So whenever it's cold, it can actually take less water, but the relative saturation to 100% can still be, let's say, 40, 47% like it is right now in here. Mm. So it measures actually how much of the maximum it can take. Okay, so how are we doing? Should it be mm -hmm. elevated here? We're doing pretty well. Okay. Um, it should be between 40 and 60 percent. That's okay. the ideal range. Too much is not good, too little is not good. So right now we're perfect with 47 percent. Right, and, and Oliver, how do Condair humidifiers, how do they minimize the negative effects of dry air? Well, basically simply by adding water to the air. So when you, for instance, uh, sweep a dusty basement or a dusty garage, what would you do? You would spray some water to bind the dust, actually. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're taking water in its gaseous state into the air. And we've been doing this for 70 years, and we, you know, we have all technologies out there, so we're the only company, actually, with all the technologies. And we can look at the customer's specific needs or their applications and then recommend whatever is best suited. Innovation is very important for us, uh, but not only technology innovation, also business models and uh, applications. So we brought in uh, new technologies to our customers to reduce energy consumption, for example, through our humidifier cold water solution, but also our gas-fired humidifiers we increased thanks to a second uh, condensator up to 93%. On the application side, we also do cooling solutions so we can reduce the cooling loads in the building thanks to our humidifiers. And last, business models is becoming more and more important. We include service offerings, but also through digitalization and the connectivity, we can bring in new solutions. Sustainability is a term in our vision statement. Productivity, sustainability and health with air and water is our commitment. When we decided to build this building here, already in the planning phase, we have clearly defined this building will be the most sustainable as possible. We introduced geothermal, solar panels, cooling and heating ceilings, humidification for the health, and we succeeded. We beat the energy standards of ENEVE by more than 50%. Quality is very important for us because our systems are used in the mission critical applications and there is, cannot break down. So we tested during development, but also at the end of the production to make sure only the perfect product is delivered. 
And if in case something really goes wrong, we have a global service organization that can be on site and service our units. Oliver, how does Condair work with engineers and architects to design spaces with optimal hydration? That's really not so easy, I have to say, because the building industry as a whole um, is actually has the lowest productivity of all industries out there. And that's due to its fragmented structure, due to the fact that there are many stakeholders involved. Mm -hmm. We try to come from all ends, actually. So we work with design engineers, contractors, but on the other hand, also um, actually talk to the end users. We also offer OEM solutions. And when we do that, we try to bring whole solutions. We support with the design, the calculation, even writing the specs and, and offer tools and apps to do that as well, but at the very end we also do after-sales service. Um, so we really try to cover the whole value chain with all stakeholders involved. Wonderful. And, and Oliver, what types of buildings can benefit from Condair? Theoretically, anyone. Yeah. You know, when you think back in, in history, basically, we, you know, for thousands of years, mankind lived in spaces with an open architecture. There was a natural exchange of air and therefore also natural good relative humidity. And then it was really about 300 years ago with the Industrial Revolution when we started living and spending our time more and more indoor. And now we spend 80 to 90 percent of our time indoor actually. Right. And by coincidence or not, it's also when the seasonal flu epidemics actually started. And about 100 years ago, we um, started with central heating, and that makes this, this problem worse and worse. And in the 70s then, of course, with the uh, oil, oil price shock, you know, we started looking at energy consumption of buildings. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, we have tight building envelopes. The loss of energy through windows, to give you an example, has decreased 10 times over the last 50 years. So there's less and less air exchange. And there are further developments, uh, trends that uh, add to this problem. The average temperature keeps going up. It's about 5 degrees centigrade or roughly 10 Fahrenheit over the last 50 years. Mm. And then there are fewer and fewer people in a, in a building, so that, which means there is less natural humidification through laundering, showering, cooking. So that, that actually makes this, this problem worse and worse. So therefore, you know, it's really almost any building, depending on the climate conditions, of course, that needs um, humidity. Well, and it's so interesting, too, because we put so much concern on what we eat and drink and put into our bodies, but the air we breathe um, has such an impact. Yeah, and, and, you know, we typically talk about the quality of the outside air, mm -hmm. um, but, right. you know, let's be honest, with the exception of, of Asia, probably, um, that's not really a challenge in, in, uh, in the West or in industrialized right. countries, really. So it's really the indoor air that we should care about much more. Well, in addition, we spend 80, 90 percent of our time indoors. I, I live in Vermont and I love to ski and bicycle and all that, but I still spend most of my time indoors. Yeah. Oliver, from start to finish, what types of resources does Condair offer to, to help builders, contractors, architects, engineers to create better buildings? See, the problem is that this, this challenge is typically being approached in a two one-dimensional way. So for instance, uh, reducing the energy consumption or having ventilation in place. And, and that typically then creates some other issues. And I think we forgot what buildings are actually about. You know? I mean, when you look at the real estate, that is a value that is many times greater than the GDP of a nation. Mm -hmm. And we tend to protect the uh, buildings rather than the main purpose of a building to protect people. We try to take a holistic approach to this. So not going after one parameter only. So we try to have a healthy indoor climate um, and at the same time to reduce energy consumption. And we, we offer this service, as mentioned before, we're a specialist in humidification, dehumidification and evaporative cooling. And by bringing all this to the table globally actually with our global organization, we support um, designers to do that. So what is next for Condair? Well, we have really just started scratching the surface. We belong to a generation that has grown up in the belief that vaccinations and antibiotics would cure any disease. 
but you know the opposite is the case right now. When you look at antibiotics, there has not been any innovation for 40 years because it's so much more lucrative actually to develop a medication for a chronic disease because you would remain a customer for lifetime and that's a bit of the challenge and with that we see more and more superbugs and you know there is an estimate that uh, roughly 700,000 people annually die from infections due to antimicrobial resistance and by the year 2050 it is estimated that that will grow to 10 million so you know and nature has invented this this very simple but wonderful defense mechanism called relative humidity and it's the first line of, of defense and, and that's what we should think of again to actually approach this in a more preventive way and then of course add many elements to that. Oliver, can you please tell people how they can get more information about Condair? The simplest is to go on our website. Um, we maintain websites in 60 countries in 15 different languages so if you just type in Condair dot and the country code you will find more information about Condair. But not only that, we do give access to many of the scientific studies that we reference today mm -hmm. so that you can also learn more about the importance of relative humidity and its um, context with, um, with health. Well, Oliver and Dr. Taylor, it sounds like thanks to Condair and its innovative humidifier systems, we can all breathe a lot easier. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Kathy. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for watching. I'm Kathy Ireland.